Quick time now to get the views of our media and political experts, MMA Creative Vice President, Democratic Operative Mike Kopp, and her daily at 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome. Nice to see you again. We have to start with Penn State. It's not a political issue, but everything is political. A terrible controversy, a terrible a tragedy for these young men that happened on the campus. Smolders for 13 years and now really implodes the whole university in a state of uproar. The coach, the president of the university, tossed out. It's going to be a while before this mess is really resolved. Yeah, and you've got a lot of folks whose lives have been destroyed. Right. First of all, the, the victims. And just this week when the indictment came out on Monday, by the end of the week, you had the number of, of kids who were coming forth uh, that were identified. I think it's now up to 18 or 19 kids as opposed to the eight that and came out on Monday. It's going to grow. And this, the case gets more sordid and sick as they get into more of the graphic details. And this is not going to go out clean. Yeah, the Board of Trustees did the right thing. They had to go in there and clean house. You can't have a head coach acting like he didn't know anything about this. I mean, that's just, that, no, that's not plausible. Is there any excuse at all for how this fell? Not what happened, but how it was reported. People were told it just never went anywhere outside the university. How could that possibly happen? I think it's people putting the football program ahead of, of, right. of kids who are exactly. being molested and abused. I think the graduate assistant who saw it, I think, did the right thing. I mean, he went coach, and told John. Joe Paterno, who right. was the god of Happy Valley. I mean, it, you don't go higher than that. And then at that point, it was, I'm going to cover for my friend, I'm going to cover this up. And for 13 years, this guy continued to have access to Penn State facilities. As recently as a week or so before this broke, he was still on campus, still having access to the fitness facilities at right. the campus. This, this is disturbing on so many levels, and it's going to cause a lot of heads to roll. If the head coach knew about it, the head coach could have done something yeah. about it and didn't. Let's talk about Middle Tennessee and money being raised here in Middle Tennessee. Joe Biden, the vice president in town, and raised some money for the president's re-election campaign. Rick Perry holds a fundraiser in Williamson County. Condi Rice in town. Get politics talked about. We still are an integral part when it comes to funding a lot of these campaigns, if nothing else. Yeah, voting, we may be irrelevant, but <laughs> yeah. uh, when it comes to voting, sure we're very, yeah. very popular. Uh, you're going to see, again, by the time we get to Tennessee, I, I think the Republican primary process is going to be over. It's going to get winnowed down big time in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Florida. By the time we get to Tennessee, it should be a done deal. But the money to spend in those other a lot places of is going to come out of Tennessee. And ultimately, in the general election, I'm not sure if Tennessee is going to be that relevant next November either, but we're still going to be a great place for people to come raise money. I think that's exactly right. I mean, with the health care industry and some other industries in town, it is cash rich. And the president has uh, his vice president come to Tennessee who right. does not do well here, but still raising right. money for him. Absolutely. I mean, there are still Democrats in business who want to give money to support the president, and you've got to come to and ask for it. Tennessee U.S. Senator Lamar Alexander broke with Republican ranks this week opposing a bill, a clear, clean air bill, that, as he said, would allow dirty air to move into Tennessee from Kentucky and other states. It's a little rare for him to go against the grain, but he is known for doing that. He says it would hurt health here, hurt the environment here, and hurt jobs here. Well, he recently stepped out of a leadership position with the Republicans in the Senate so that he could be more free to follow his own path and, in his words, do what he thinks best for Tennessee in a conservative way, but what's best for Tennessee first, and maybe be able to work across the aisle with others. I'm not sure if this was the good first step for mm -hmm. him to be able to show that, but we'll see how it plays. Well, I think, again, he's had, a, he's had a pretty good position on the environment for many years. When he was governor, he did a lot for the state and the environmental issues. And, and it's, at this point in his career, I'm sure he's thinking about his legacy. GOP presidential primary, a lot of news came out of a lot of different areas this week. Herman Cain continues to defend himself, saying that he did not harass sexually any women. Five women have come forward, two have gone public. He continues to maintain his position in the polls. Rick Perry had his oops moment, as it were. I guess the question is, as we look at these, are they this week's stories? Are they bigger stories? Are they going to defeat some of these candidates as they go forward? Well, I think for Herman Cain, the, the story has blown all out of proportion. You had one woman uh, this week who got a bunch of profilers. I think it was the fifth woman mm -hmm. who said in Egypt they invited him in to speak. They went to dinner with him, a couple of women. He didn't do anything wrong, didn't say anything wrong, didn't mistreat any of them at all. Uh, but she was for Obama last time. She's going to be a vote for Obama this time. And she just didn't like the aura he gave off. That's not a national news story, and that's not sexual harassment. So you've now gotten into the silly season of the, of the story. Unless it goes further than this, I think it'll be over. I think the real story is that Mitt Romney is looking more and more like a presidential candidate with all these other candidates imploding. And that's, I mean, the more of this that happens, the more he benefits. I think that from, from the standpoint of the debate this week, right. the, the Kane collapse had already taken place. You're seeing his numbers right. slip. It was a prime opportunity for Rick Perry to, to really kind of be like the other end of the teeter-totter and come up as Kane went down. 
and he was doing great in his debate, the best debate he'd done <laughs> until that moment. Oops. And it was, I can't remember what it was. What happened? I can't remember what happened to it. But it was not a good moment for him. And again, I think that's been blown out of proportion. But the bottom line is it was a missed opportunity for him because he had an opportunity to come up as Kane went down. And that may actually be flowing now over to Newt Gingrich or maybe eventually uh, flowing over to uh, Mitt Romney. Fair or not, everything is scrutinized in a presidential campaign. It was probably a minor oops. Do you think he did best he could going on the national talk shows the next morning, going on shows that night and saying, look, I'm human, I made a mistake, I knew who it was, I just couldn't come back to memory. I think he handled it about it's as good as he could possibly fly, do. But I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's going to be an old story by next week. You know, when you look at, at this is in terms of a big deal, you know, you have the President of the United States who talked about 57 states. You had him go on with George Stephanopoulos and talk about his Muslim faith until Stephanopoulos corrected him and mean, oh, you mean your Christian faith. So there have been other oops moments for candidates that have, that have gone on to, to do pretty well. And I suspect that Perry, if he can rebound in other areas, will get past this. You can't run and hide after you done something like that and go into the comedian circuit, and that's the way to go. About 40 seconds to go. Is it the right thing to do for the governor? After imposing the curfew on Occupy National protesters, they were arrested. They wouldn't go to jail. He's going to suggest that the prosecutors drop the charges against them and move forward. I think, again, that's the best he can do at this point. I would point out that, that we've seen less violence, debauchery, disgusting behavior here than we have in other places. Just on Thursday, there were more deaths at Occupy Wall Street places, two of them in America, than there were deaths of American servicemen in Afghanistan. Yeah, he did the right thing. I mean, at this point, the, 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 the more the state pushes, the more it becomes a story. So you take that away, and you don't really have much of a story. Mike Cop, Steve Gill, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.